after more than two years and a half since the launch of the first Apple Silicon Mac and after the launch of the new and super powerful M2 Mac Studio, what is the compatibility situation of our music production tools with Apple Silicon? Can we run our favorite DAW and our favorite plugins natively on Apple Silicon Max? Is all the software we need now natively compatible with Apple Silicon? Let's find out! For me, the introduction of the MacBook Pro with Apple Silicon was a turning point and with my M1 Max MacBook Pro I was able to do all my video editing and my music production activities with a portable computer that is basically dead silent. And you know how important it is for us music creators to work and record in a silent environment without hearing the noise of the fun of our computers. Obviously, one of the biggest problems with the M1 Mac was the compatibility with all the software I had, with Cubase, with all the plugins I use, etc. Cubase has become compatible natively pretty soon, but many plugins were not. Therefore, I was obliged to use Cubase under the Rosetta 2 translation layer in the last two years. And now I have here with me this crazy M2 Mac Studio that is going to become my main video editing and music production tool. But this time I want to use the full potential of this machine. I want to run all the music software I have natively in order to set up the lowest buffer size possible and therefore obtaining the lower latency possible when playing guitar or bass plugins. Well, the compatibility situation is now much better, but it is still not perfect. And I want to share with you my findings, the issues I have encountered and how I have solved them. First of all, my main digital audio workstation is Cubase and Cubase is fully compatible natively with Apple Silicon and also with Mac OS Ventura. But there is still a little annoying problem. If you go to the application folder and you right click the Cubase application, you notice that you have the possibility to run Cubase natively or under the Rosetta translation layer. Well, believe it or not, the first time you launch it, even if the check is not applied, Cubase starts under Rosetta. You have to check it, launch Cubase and uncheck it and then it's gonna run natively. Pretty crazy. But why we need to run Cubase under the translation layer? Well, basically because if just one of the plugins you are using do not run natively on Apple Silicon, you are obliged to run Cubase under Rosetta. And so now let's talk about the plugins. First of all, I use a universal audio Apollo interface and there is a pretty complicated process you have to follow to use it. Basically you have to start your Mac in recovery mode and then change the security policies in order to use the Apollo hardware. Fortunately you have to do this procedure only once but it's quite not user friendly and time consuming. Once this procedure is done your audio interface may need a firmware update. And after that, I was able to run it very well, being able to launch all the UAD plugins in the UAD console. But there is a big problem. The Universal Audio plugins are VST2 only. And in a native Apple Silicon mode, Cubase does not support anymore VST2. You need to use Cubase under Rosetta 2 to use UAD plugins in your DAW. On the other hand, the Spark version of the UAD plugins can be run natively in Apple Silicon as they are VST3 compatible. But actually only few of my plugins were available under the Spark platform. For instance, I really like the UAD lexicon 
480 but this is available only in VST format and therefore cannot be run natively on Apple Silicon. Furthermore, it is still not available under the UAD Spark platform. Therefore, if you want to run UAD plugins natively on Apple Silicon, you have to run Cubase under Rosetta. But sorry UAD, this time I don't want to do it. Yes, I'm ditching basically UAD plugins on Cubase. I think that nowadays there are many good alternatives. For instance, I have substituted the UAD 480 with a new crystalline reverb, which is pretty good. On the other hand, I had no problem at all with Fab Filter, Sound Toys, Pulsar Audio plugins, IK Amplitude or Tone X, Arturia, Native Instrument, Guitar Rig, STL Ampub, etc. All these plugins run natively on Apple Silicons, which is nice. Another plugin that I use a lot is the Torpedo Wall of Sounds that unfortunately does not run natively. But we have a solution, which is the new two note genome plugin. It is still in beta and you have to join the Facebook beta tester group to download it, but it works nicely and it is actually a nice upgrade versus the original Wall of Sound plugin. Basically, all the plugins I use in my music production workflow run natively but the universal audio ones, which is crazy, considering that UAD plugins are so well known and famous. Now, another issue you may face is related to your project templates. I have a Cubase project template that I use with all the basic settings I need and all the plugins I use already initialized. Unfortunately, this template was set up using Cubase under Rosetta and well, when you run Cubase natively, it basically misses all the plugins. Therefore, I was obliged to reinitialize every plugin, substituting the plugins with their Apple Silicon native counterpart, which was very time consuming and boring. Summarizing, Cubase works flawlessly natively. All the plugins I use run natively, but the UAD ones, for which I have found some substitutions. Now, this platform provides with three main advantages. A silent recording studio, as basically the fan never spin up. A very low buffer size that guarantee a comfortable playing in terms of latency. A super powerful machine that flies in terms of exporting a Cubase project or a Final Cut project that I use a lot for making this video. At the end, this Mac Studio is a fantastic music production and video editing tool that is now mature also in terms of software support, with just only one big exception, Universal Audio Plugins. Something honestly I didn't expect. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.